On the breakfast, amid crippling medical brain drain in Nigeria, the United Kingdom announces vacancy for Nigerian teachers. We'll have further conversation as we proceed. Also on the breakfast, Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise expresses concern over the hasty passage of the 2022 Finance Bill by the National Assembly. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Ebopo. A happy holiday to some. <laughs> Still a happy holiday. And to others, I'm sure that you probably would be at work at this point in time. But that's okay, whatever the case may be. Sit up and sit down. Make sure you have a cup of coffee and relax. And let's, you know, bring you up to speed with what's making the round. The lineup is quite interesting this morning for us. And we we'll start off with a top trending is a segment where we talk about what people are talking about. First is uh, the uh, former president's endorsement of Peter Obi, that's a Labour Party uh, candidate. Now, reactions have continued to trail the endorsement of Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi by former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Ulushagun Obasanjo. In a letter he addressed to Nigerians on New Year's Day, uh, you know, it just reminds me of a conversation I had recently with someone said that we don't see, you know, former president Obasanjo writing letters. I'm like, he had written a lot. Obasanjo announced the presidential candidate of the Labour Party as his adopted candidate for, you know, the 2023 elections and that was it. Well, uh, there's been a lot uh, reaction on Twitter, especially. Uh, so you have, uh, you know, Twitter handle Benga, who said that Obasanjo. Now, don't forget that if you live in this climb, uh, Obasanjo has been referred to as OBJ. A lot of people have given him some nicknames, and he said, he tweeted, this was on Twitter, he said, uh, Obasanjo would not stop or support, but for three reasons. Now, one of the reasons he mentioned is that Tsunubu supported Atiku when, you know, Obasanjo wanted to crush his deputy in 2004. It was Bart who gave uh, oxygen to Atiku. So that's the reason why Obasanjo cannot support uh, Tunubu, right? He also said and tweeted that uh, Bart created the LCDAS and some governors copied him. But when Obasanjo withdrew their funds, others uh, retreated and Bart went to court and he won. That's the second reason he said he would not. Now, another reason he said is that uh, Obasanjo did not want President Muhammad Buhari to win the APC ticket in 2015. Now, Tunubu ignored him, worked for Buhari again in 2019. Obasanjo stood against President Muhammad Buhari, but Tunubu stood in support of Buhari, and President Muhammad Buhari won. So he said that the ego or the ego of uh, Obasanjo was deflated again. And so uh, he's saying that there will be a repetition of that, you know, next month. We're looking at February. That's when the elections will happen. So don't think that elections is in December or in June. It's next month. Get your PVC. Very, very important. But, you know, coming to the crux of the conversation, there are a lot of reactions. Another reaction, uh, you also have another reaction. The All Progressive Congress APC presidential candidate Bola Tinubu has also described uh, former President Olusha Gunobas and just endorsement of his counterpart from the Labour Party, that's the LP, Peter Obias, what less? And Atiku Okowa's presidential campaign organization has reacted to it. And, um, you know, they're saying of the PDB, they say that the former president Olusha Gunobas and just endorsement of Peter Obi does not reflect the opinion of or the position of the majority of Nigerians. And that's, you know, a statement of facts. That's the truth. Nothing else but the truth. So help me God. <laughs> so I, I find all of this quite interesting. But I, I, I don't think that we should really make any, you know, buzz about this. It shouldn't really be a big deal. It's just a natural reaction that should, you know, come. Let's even look at, uh, let's cite an example, okay? I will liken this to a setting where you have a family. In a family, the father decides to, 
you know, gifts one of the sons. I won't say the first son, maybe the second or the third. <laughs> I don't know why I skipped that. Second or the third son and say, hey, because you have you have done X, Y, Z, maybe there's a tax they were supposed to do and then uh, one of the sons lived up to expectation and decided to reward him with one of his favorite toys, or whatever it is. And the other children will begin to murmur and complain, don't worry, you know, it's just because of this. Daddy did this because of that. That's always the case. So it's just natural. But the question here is, if it was in the reverse, will all of these comments come? And I'm just asking, and it's something that you should also ask. So I, I think that it's okay for all of these reactions to continue. This is just uh, a few among so many you know, comments and reactions that you have in different quarters that will continue. But let's also not forget that you also have, on the other hand, whether or not the G5, some of them have actually endorsed or support supported uh, the former uh, Lagos state governor and also the presidential candidate of uh, the APC. So it is uh, what it is. But most importantly, uh, like uh, the Atiku campaign or the PDP has stated, these will, as much as uh, some persons have queried the uh, relevance of a form of a president, Olusha Gunobasanj, or whether he's relevant, or he, he, he can't win primaries in his constituency, he can't even win elections in his ward, and what have you, he has lost political relevance, you can't also uh, take that out that he still has, you know, some influence to some extent, but it is still also, you know, dependent on the electorate, but we know that it's like having influencers, it's like having uh, fans, it's like having your favorite. And a lot of people still, you know, are fans of uh, the former president, okay? So people, uh, you have a lot of people who follow him, and so whatever he says might become, you know, a word, might become something that they will follow through to the latter. So you can't take that out entirely, right? So it will have an impact, but it might not be entirely, but however, it is dependent on you, Nigeria, as a Nigerian, you know, to go out and cast your vote. You have a mind of your own. You're not a zombie. And so you can decide who you want to vote for and who, who you do not want to vote for without being influenced by anyone. And so that might not necessarily, you know, mean anything. Right? But we can't say that it won't have an impact. It will definitely have an impact because a lot of persons will trunk, you know, or you know, pursue that particular path. But to say that it would, um, you know, determine everything, we can't actually say. So, yes. Moving away from that, there's also another conversation that's gotten a lot of Nigerians talking, reacting, and this is in the entertainment scene. Bonaboy. Uh, finally addresses his fans after he came late to a concert. We'll just quickly take a look at this uh, short clip and when we return we'll talk more. <laughs> Very rough of him to say, you know, all of that. Well, Bonaboy has heavily uh, has been heavily criticised for not showing up for his concert. I mean, he showed up very late. First, uh, one of the issues that he's been criticized for is his alterance. And uh, second is a kick. And another, what's the other issue again? You know, there are like three issues, um, uh, you know, that he's been criticized for. So let's even start with the very first one. This is one out of so many criticism that he's gotten. Uh, the first is that there was, the show was billed to start at 8 p.m., but he showed up at 3 a.m. Uh, that's about maybe seven, six hours without an apology, okay? And you saw that particular video. Now, secondly, uh, okay, maybe I'll tell you, secondly, is that video that you saw where he said, oh, when I talk, say, I kill person for Kubana. When I talk, say, my mama did dance for Fela. Uh, if you don't love me, he said that. I, I feel like that's, you know, a very strong word. It's a swear word, really, but I, tr I try not to use it. And uh, that's the reason. And, this, and the third one is the kick. So I'm not sure we have that click, 
um, sorry, I beg your pardon, the, uh, the clip, okay? So there's a video, a part of it, a, a clip of Bonner Boy reacting to a fan who wanted to come up stage. Now, if you follow Bonner Boy very well, he had earlier stated that he does not like people. He, I think there was a time he had a concert where he mentioned that, oh, he doesn't want people to come on stage uh, while he's performing, you know, climbing up stage and all of that. He even said that if you come, I'll blow you. Like, he sounded very, very violent and all of that. The point is, when I'm performing, I understand that you love me and support me, but please do not come up stage. You never can tell. It could be a big distraction. So, and this is also one of the reasons why he's been criticized. Uh, I saw that particular clip where, you know, he uses his leg. Probably, I didn't really say it, but it was like, there was an action and movement from his leg. And that also got him all of the, you know, uh, criticism that's getting right now, the tongue lash, whatever it is, the bashing that he's getting. But let's talk about going to events and showing up, you know, in concert and all of that. Now, before time, I used to think that because this is what we have believed that showing up late is it shows that you you belong to a certain class. You are an elite. You you know you are a superstar. You are a big boy. Now, this is not just limited to, um, you know. It's not limited to artists in Nigeria or concerts where they're being organized where you have certain artists. So you imagine that I'm supposed to perform at an event. I'm just saying, for instance, I don't want to use any other artist's name before I'm being, you know, dragged, <laughs> right? But imagine I'm supposed to perform at a certain concert. And then the concert or the event starts at a certain time. But maybe the organizers think that you have to, you know, prolong the show. It has to stay and then bring this artist at a certain time because that's what happens. So you wait for the artist, 11, 12, he doesn't show up, one, two, and then you're wait, waiting because he's your favorite or you're waiting just to see him perform and then he comes up late. It has become part of, you know, the, the system. It has become part of it. And I know that, I mean, some people say that Bonner Boy sings about slavery and what have you. I can't even quote, you know, this handles that tweeted all of that. But yesterday and up until this moment, there's a lot of talk about Bonner Boy. But yet he goes outside of the country and he says, is support me Africa is going through a lot and uh, we're renewing the effort and what have you and then he comes back and treats his people like trash he's put out you know a statement which some people also have criticized however if you look at the statement, it would have been important. I think that it would have been important for Bonner uh, to come out to say that, yes, this is the reason why he showed up. He would have uh, put up an apology to say, hey, sorry for the delay. This is why we showed up at this time due to some logic, uh, logical issues or technical issues and what have you. We apologize. But of course, the show continues. I think that might make a lot of sense rather than, you know, showing up and not saying anything. And then you have all of this, you know, back and forth. If you were at that event you will see that they had a different feel from what you know you can see when Bonner Boy is in is in other parts of the world or you know is in other countries it sounded like he was in a family meeting and then he was himself you know you could feel uh, the vibe the communication and what have you but I think that the issue of showing up late at uh, event or whether you're performing or you're a guest is something that should be addressed I like the fact that Nigerians are speaking up about some of these things, holding people accountable, speaking up about it, because it's totally unacceptable. I think it's in our climate, in our you know, lexicon, that you'll find the issue of African time. I have seen it. So it's not just limited to the entertainment scene. It cuts across, including you know, the political terrain. You find politicians. I mean, if a governor is supposed to show up for an event, he comes very late. You know, let's even say he's the special guest of one. He shows up late, and then you begin to think it's part of the standard. That's what should be expected, because he's a governor, he has to come late. If he doesn't come late, then how do we know he's the governor? We need to change all of this. We need to do better. If you have an event for a certain time, and and this will not be the first time where you have artists actually waiting. Because also, if you look at uh, recent performance of Kiss Daniel amongst older artists, they've showed up late. Not an excuse, however, but I think that we can change the pattern. If an event is slated to happen for eight o'clock, let it start for eight. And if you have a time slot according to the schedule, then you should show up at the time you should show up. I really don't know if it's the organizer, but in the case of Bonner Boy, as of yesterday, just before this morning, he put out a comment and he said, 
uh, you know, there were a lot of logistics issue in terms of sound, audio, and what have you, but people have frowned at it saying, there's no apology. I mean, you should have said that. You should have said that, you know, when you were faced with the people rather than uh, not saying anything and now you're saying this this is just totally damage control so i think that as a people we need to do better it's okay that people uh you know get into the fact that you can't be treated anyhow especially when you're paying money and this is not just this treatment is not limited to the entertainment scene it cuts across everywhere prior to this time we hear that customers are the king of the market the customer is king and what a view that's the phrase but right now i think that customers are begging with their money so so with your money, you're being treated anyhow, and we can't continue like this and expect a different country. This contributes to making us who we are, a people. So we, we should do better. Event organizers, let's take note. You have an event, sort out all that you have to sort out. But one thing that stands out for me or that stood out for me for Bonoboy's comment is the fact that he said that the sound quality production and what have you wasn't up to standard, and he had several options, show up without a, a sound or audio and what have you. Everyone was present his band himself but you know there were technical issues and there's no way he could show up okay so he's promised and he said not necessarily a promise that he would try to fix world-class infrastructure for the entertainment industry asking for collaboration I think that's a plus right that's a plus really um, we can do better as a people let's come together and ensure that we develop you know our country our economy and everything that we have and continue to thrive in love okay and do better as a people now another is also very saddening uh, we quickly just uh, take a quick look at this track closely it's a short clip uh, it, it's a very careless one you know according to some reactions let's roll that one please <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is service to NASA Pilot Working Hall here at the number 18 from Wonderland. Flight number 36 with service to Phoenix. All together, then confirm passengers. Please make your way immediately to the number 18 for boarding. We are closing the boarding doors in two minutes. Well, that's a very short clip of an airline staff uh, throwing uh, passengers' luggage like a garbage. <laughs> she looks very angry. I mean, that's my that's what I can take out from that video. But you know, um, social media, especially on Twitter, the conversation has been whether or not this is from Nigeria. So a lot of people say, "Oh, Niger, that's it. That's what we have." Because every other thing that's not good seems to be attributed to Nigeria. But we're not that bad, really. I know we have our excesses, but you know, it's not as bad as we make it look sometimes. Uh, we can't really, for sure setting whether that video is from Nigeria because if you look at the post I mean looking at where it originated from it came with a flag and a hashtag from South Africa and uh, one can say until you get to whoever posted this this also originated from Nigeria from a Nigerian blog and that's not um, you know from we can't say if it's you know in Nigeria that it happened I suspect that it's not Nigeria that's what I can say but whatever the case may be so it's not whether or not it's Nigeria or it's not Nigeria whether it's in Europe or you know it's in Africa or it's in wherever it is right uh, what's in what's in what is important is that um, it's a universal thing uh, culture we have to be very cautious we have to be you know polite we have to you know be civil in uh, discharging our duties it's the same thing as saying police brutality I, I, of course you know that the issue of police brutality is not limited to nigeria it cuts across board and so in this particular case uh, you just see a, a young woman or a lady who seemed very angry um, i know that you have segmentation so it's possible that that's a luggage and you might not have valuables because uh, you have a part where you have, okay, sensitive document or what have you, and then they put it in a different part. 
whatever the case may be, that doesn't really look good. Okay, so it's not um, a thing of a certain region or country. It's a, a global issue, it's a humanistic issue that you treat people with respect and you treat them very well. I really don't know what that, what could have been responsible for all of that. Maybe she's burning out, but uh, it's, it's not an excuse, you know, to toss uh, the bags of the people like that. Anything can actually happen. What if the bag you know, bricks and then all of the issues, all of the, you know, luggage or stuffs inside is out, okay? Um, it, it can be so much, but I think that uh, we can do better as a people, right? And if you're going through any sort of pressure or any kind of issue as well, it's okay to report to the, you know, authorities or your superiors rather than, you know, acting that way, right? I just see someone who's very sad and very unhappy acting right there. But that's the much we can take this morning on our top trending. That has, uh, these are some of the conversations that Nigerians have been talking about on social media, different spaces. We take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of the national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning.